everyone. This is Ian Shaver here with UDA Technologies, and I want to say first of all, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, our webinar today is going to cover QuickBooks integration as it takes place from the UDA Construction Suite software. Now, because we are working with the desktop version of Construction Suite today, I'm going to be focusing on the desktop version of QuickBooks. Uh, of course, we do integrate with QuickBooks Online as well, but I'll let Rachel take care of that with the Construction Online webinar on Friday. Let's dive into how Construction Suite and QuickBooks Desktop will speak the same language so that you guys don't have any duplicate entry or a mess to clean up later. Um, now, if you guys had a chance to join me on Monday or yesterday for the previous webinars that we did on uh, an overview on Monday or yesterday's was estimating and reporting, um, there's a few things that I typically touch on in those, and I'll just go ahead and recap them now. Um, so when you're first looking at the Construction Suite software and when you first log in, it takes you here to the Today page. On the Today page in Construction Suite, you'll see the navigation panel on the left-hand side. And today we're going to be focusing mostly on the contacts and the projects that are going to be going back and forth between Construction Suite and QuickBooks. Now in the very beginning, the Construction Suite contacts list is going to look pretty extensive. Uh, hopefully you guys are going through and pulling in a lot of valuable contacts and uh, making sure that the information in Construction Suite is, is uh, good and, and viable information for you guys to build projects off of and everything like that. Um, but as you go through and you look at the list, you'll see a lot of contacts in here that fall under different groups in Construction Suite. So you might have subcontractors, you might have um, electricians and plumbers and, and specialty like roofers and, and masons and things like that. You'll also have suppliers and, and lumber companies and architects and engineers and customers and leads and everything under the sun. Now in Construction Suite you can organize these in uh, plenty of different ways. You guys can create your own custom contact groups and you can do so right here under the settings tab uh, for, your, for your contacts. But QuickBooks really only has four categories for the contacts. And, and the four categories that QuickBooks will keep track of are uh, customers, you'll have vendors, you've got employees, and then you've got everybody else. Uh, what QuickBooks refers to as the other names list. And so with that said, Construction Suite is going to have uh, obviously far more grouping because you're going to be working with these guys pretty extensively. Um, but in QuickBooks, you've just really got the three tabs that you'll be working in for the most part. And Construction Suite and QuickBooks have the ability to sync these contacts with everything except for the specifics on the contact groups. But you'll find the option to sync your Construction Suite contacts and your QuickBooks contacts under the data menu. Go to Data, go to Sync Center, and you'll find a QuickBooks contact sync that gives you one of two options. You'll either be able to sync everybody, and Construction Suite can just let you know when that contact list is merged and everybody's in both places, or you can do a selective sync and have QuickBooks get you to, or have Construction Suite get you to go through and pick and choose who's going to be involved in this sync. Now that's the option that I tend to prefer so that you can go through and verify who's going to show up. Um, it's also an important one the first time you guys are working with the sync between Construction Suite and QuickBooks um, because in QuickBooks, if you don't have any contacts yet and you try to push all these contacts over to QuickBooks, QuickBooks isn't going to be able to make a distinction between your electricians and your clients. They're going to assume everybody is just another name, so they just dump them all in the other names list. That's no good. So make sure that the first time you go through the Sync Center, take a look for the option that prompts you to approve changes so that you can go through and tell Construction Suite who goes into which of those four QuickBooks buckets for contacts that you're looking at. Who's a customer, who's a vendor, who's an employee, and then who doesn't count. Um, but ultimately that's going to be the case. Some of you might be starting with Construction Suite uh, brand new, but you've had QuickBooks for years. You guys are probably going to do the reverse. Um, when you're doing the contact sync between Construction Suite and QuickBooks, you can go ahead and pull everybody that you want into Construction Suite. Ah, look, updates. We'll get those later. Um, you can pull everybody into Construction Suite because uh, once they're here, it's really easy to go ahead and assign them to the correct contact group, um, be they customers, clients, leads, um, lenders, vendors, electricians, subs, even if you guys have your own specialty sets up here, you can go ahead and pull all that information together uh, here and it should be easily adjusted based on which groups they're going to go to. Now to make those adjustments, all you have to do is right click on one of the contacts and edit the contact to assign them to contact groups. You'll also be able to do this for, for multiple people at once if you need to, or um, you'll have plenty of options through the right click menu. But ultimately, you want to make sure that your contacts exist both in Construction Suite and in QuickBooks. And if you guys don't mind, uh, let's just go in and take a look really quickly. 
and how those contacts will typically show up. Now, I mention this because uh, in Construction Suite and QuickBooks, as you're working between, two, between the two programs, most of the transactions that you'll be pushing back and forth between Construction Suite and QuickBooks start with the, the name of the contact that you're working with. Um, on the vendor side, if you're ever sending over something like a purchase order or you're tracking bills or anything like that by vendor, uh, a lot of what Construction Suite is going to do is look for transactions associated with a specific vendor and tied into a certain job in Construction Suite, what we call the projects. Um, so <clears throat> we'll give you a start on this in just a moment, but first of all, let's make sure that I have somebody in here to work with, as in our, our example, and then we'll show you from there. I've created a brand new QuickBooks company file, so we get to start from a, from a clean system. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that because this gives us the opportunity to go through and see how everything new will appear without having a whole lot of clutter to sift through. So I'm starting with a fresh QuickBooks company file and in this I've just created a single contact right now in the vendors center uh, which is Ajax Supply and you'll see them down here as well. There's Ajax Supply. This is the matching vendor in QuickBooks. Um, but ultimately if you wanted to send over some extras you could do this uh, once again just by going to the data menu, open up the sync center, And uh, once the Sync Center pops up, you'll find a QuickBooks heading. And in that QuickBooks heading, you'll see just the one entry underneath it for a contact sync. This is the only syncing that we do outside of estimates between Construction Suite and QuickBooks. Everything else will take place in the Construction Suite estimates, the primary estimate for any given project. But if you need to merge some contact information, this is where you'll do it. So once again, if you're going through the sync, make sure that you select the option to prompt you to approve changes. Uh, make sure that you select the option here for um, priority. Uh, in my case, Construction Suite has all of them, so Construction Suite gets priority. And then you can select the direction that you want the sync. I don't have anybody in QuickBooks, so I'm just going to export my contacts from Construction Suite to send over to QuickBooks. Um, so here it is. Now, one of the things that you'll notice in working with Construction Suite and QuickBooks, um, from Construction Suite, you'll have to give permission for our program to actually integrate with QuickBooks. Now, if you've ever talked to us on the phone, we'll usually make the recommendation that you log into QuickBooks as administrator in single user mode, and this right here is the exact reason why. This application certificate will only ever put pop up for the admin in QuickBooks when they're in single user mode. The rest of the time, Construction Suite is just gonna get rejected. Um, so make sure that the very first time you integrate, you get this pop-up, so log in as admin in single user mode, and from there, make sure that you select the option here to uh, allow Construction Suite to integrate whenever the QuickBooks company file is open. Now I make this recommendation because this allows Construction Suite to integrate no matter who you're setting up with access to your QuickBooks company file. They won't have to be an admin. They won't have to limit the usage to single user mode. Selecting this option will allow multi -users, uh, multiple users later on to do the integration. So it's pretty important that you select this option. Uh, now that's first, of course, for the integration itself. Once it goes through and populates the contacts list here, you'll actually notice that most of the information in this list is going to be organized on the construction suite side, uh, mostly alphabetically or by, by groups. On the QuickBooks, it's entirely by groups. If you have all contacts in, in QuickBooks and you're trying to pull those into construction suite, you'll notice that there's an alphabetical listing starting with the customers at the top of the QuickBooks side, and then it goes into the vendors, again starting over alphabetically it goes A through Z on on the vendor section side and then it goes A through Z on the employees and so on and so forth. Um, so once again you'll start to see most of this information coming together and um, you'll be able to do whatever you need to with the integration and everything like that from here as well. Uh, now let's see, looks like QuickBooks is struggling a little bit to share information with us. Give me just one moment. I'll see if I can get that to kickstart. Um, but ultimately, the important thing to this is that you guys can see that the options are going to be there for the integration itself. Now let's get back to Construction Suite and make sure that we have QuickBooks open again as well. And then we'll dive back in again here shortly. 
Um, but but once again, as you're going through that sink, just make sure that you guys do merge the correct set of contacts. The upside is if you guys pull too many contacts into Construction Suite, you can always go through and highlight large chunks of contacts and just delete them to clear it out. Effectively clearing out any of the contacts that you might have in the system. It's really easy to go ahead and pull them and get rid of them and start fresh. So don't worry too much about putting too much clutter in Construction Suite. There is nothing that you put here that we can't clean up as well. Now that said, QuickBooks is a little bit harder to get that information cleared out. So if you are going to be working with QuickBooks and you do need to send some of the information back and forth between our programs, make sure that when you open up QuickBooks, one of the first things you do prior to the integration is to go ahead and create a backup of your QuickBooks company file just to make sure that you don't end up having to go through and deliberately like or, or individually delete contacts that are in the wrong list or move them around or anything like that. Create the backup and that way you guys will always have that to revert back to should anything else come up for you. Now let's see, uh, we've got contact information and again the most important piece to this when you're integrating between Construction Suite and QuickBooks is the contact name here. This name is going to be what shows up in QuickBooks. This is also going to be called in QuickBooks. It's going to be called the client name or the customer name or the vendor name, the employee name or the other name. Um, they all ultimately reference a display name that you're looking at in QuickBooks. And in Construction Suite, that is also going to be called the uh, display name down here at the bottom. So if you edit one of the contacts, you'll see the display name here. If you want to make changes here to match up to what's in QuickBooks, make sure that you do it under the display name and don't just change the first name and last name because putting in something different here does not change that display name. This is still going to be the same no matter what you put in up at the top portion. So make sure that this is displayed the way you want it in QuickBooks. Again, I can't stress this enough. This is the part that Construction Suite and QuickBooks are using to communicate back and forth. Make sure that they match. They have to. Now with that said, syncing is going to force those to match and syncing later with estimates and schedules will also match up your project names to your QuickBooks job names. Now, if you come into Qu to QuickBooks right now and take a look at the customer center, I, again, this is a brand new QuickBooks company file, so I'm in the clear. There aren't any customers in here for me to start with. So the very first thing that we send over is going to create a brand new customer and a brand new job in QuickBooks. So with that said, I'm going to go back to using the Simpson Tenant Improvement Project. This is uh, Lisa Simpson's job. We were talking about this one earlier. Um, in, in the previous webinar, so we'll use this one. And as I mentioned, it's always going to be from within the projects in the primary estimate for the project that the integration takes place. Um, so open up one of the projects. If you go to the project tab, projects tab, you'll see all the projects there in Construction Suite. And when you get into the project, just select it from the list, you'll notice several of the recent files over on the right hand side. But most importantly, under project details, you'll have a link here to view the primary estimate. If you use this link, then you don't have to go and find one of the many, many estimates that you guys have in the project uh, that's been flagged as the primary. This will always open the correct file for you, and you'll be able to find it right under project details. Just view primary estimate, it'll open up this document for you, and then you'll be all set. Um, Yeah, so while this is loading, I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, let's just make sure that we are touching on these as we go through. By the way, if you guys do have any questions as we're going through the integration options today, make sure that you take a look for the questions panel on the GoToWebinar interface and plug in your questions there as well. We'll be able to go through these and um, answer those as we go or at the end, depending on how long this takes. So, uh, first question that I've got here, um, on the QuickBooks contact sync, is there an easy way to select only vendors or only customers? Um, so I I'm guessing that this is going to be a result of having many contacts in QuickBooks um, and trying to pull that information into Construction Suite. If you're going from Construction Suite to QuickBooks, you, we have all of ours grouped in various different ways, so you'll have to just go through and pick and choose uh, who goes into which category. But when you're going from QuickBooks into Construction Suite, if all your contacts are in QuickBooks, uh, again, QuickBooks will organize the list of contacts by their contact type. So it always puts all of the customers together, groups them together. Then it'll group together all the vendors, then it'll group together all the employees and so on. So the first couple of names on your list are going to be the same type. The, the first, like if you've got 150 customers, your contacts list will say 150 customers, and then it'll start back with A for your vendors list. Um, so maybe like 
AAA or something like that, and it'll go all the way through. And um, so it, it actually does some of that legwork for you. So good question there. Um, next question up. In Construction Suite, can you delete multiple contacts? Um, rather than going through a few steps. I don't know if you guys saw me do this, but you do have the ability to control click or shift click in any of the lists in Construction Suite. So if you do have a lot of contacts in there that you need to clean up, uh, just a quick reminder, you can click into the space near one of those contacts, hold down the shift key and click somewhere lower, on, lower down in the list to highlight several people, or you can hold down control and click through some of the contacts here as well to highlight others. So you can shift click or control click to get multiple contacts and edit or delete. Uh, keep that in mind as well. Uh, last question before we dive back into the estimate there. Uh, what's the difference between a primary estimate and every other estimate in a job? And that's another great, great question because most of the people that I work with have multiple estimates in their projects. Um, now in Construction Suite, you'll only ever have one primary estimate um, and it is marked as the primary estimate, by the way, but you've got one primary estimate that's going to be used for each project to determine the value of that project and how much is going to be lended into some of the reports, like the WIP report that we'll talk about later, and the profitability charts and everything like that. That primary estimate was the one that was going to be used to draw up the contract for the job, so the dollar amount that shows up in that contract is pulled directly from your primary estimate on the job. And the primary estimate is also the one that should be considered the, uh, the base estimate or the original contract sum whenever you guys are working through these things. Later on, it might have change orders added to it, but uh, ultimately it's that primary that's going to determine all of these other things. Now, some of the ways to have multiple estimates in a job. If you're ever working with a customer and you get to that initial estimate phase and your customer gets that original proposal and they really like you guys and they want to work with you guys but it's just a little outside their budget they may work with you to negotiate out some of the different sections of the job or negotiate down some of the costs or something like that which means that you'll have to go back and revise the estimate and I don't recommend Re, uh, replacing the original estimate that you put together. I love having the original copy that you can go back to and, and maybe label them based on which proposal or which revision you're working on. So you might have five different revisions of estimates in a project, but still only one of them is going to be the primary and that's the one that counts as your live contract sum or what will eventually become your live contract. So keep in mind that the primary is the important one in any of these all of the secondary estimates that you might see in a project are going to be exactly that. They're just revisions or maybe they're like one-off little things that you're trying to put together for a customer or ideas that you guys had, but none of them are going to apply to the contracts and they don't show up in the reports. They also don't go to QuickBooks. Only the primary estimate is allowed to send information back and forth between Construction Suite and QuickBooks, so keep that in mind as well. Now that said, I've got a primary estimate open and there's a few different things in this estimate that are going to go over to QuickBooks as well. Now so far we've talked about contact information and how the contacts have to line up. Just in case you, you haven't made the assumption yet, QuickBooks does keep track of everything by customer job, so our project names are also going to be going over to QuickBooks as a job name. You'll see the customer show up in the contacts list and beneath them and slightly indented you'll see different jobs that might apply to that customer. In my case, Lisa will show up shortly and the Simpson Tenant Improvement will show up underneath her. And uh, what shows up in the transactions are going to be determined in the QuickBooks integration tab. Now our integration with QuickBooks is, is very, very unique in that we have a detailed two-way integration that happens between Construction Suite and QuickBooks. It's also very configurable so you can send over as much or as little information as you like um, to create things like estimates and invoices, purchase orders, change orders, and credit memos. When you're pulling information back again, you can pull in invoiced amounts, how much you've charged your client. You can pull in the committed costs, which would be all the, pre the purchase orders that you sent over to QuickBooks for subcontractors and vendors and suppliers. You'll also be able to pull back in to Construction Suite all of your actual costs from QuickBooks as well, which include your bills, your checks, credit card transactions, and paychecks if you use them. Payroll is one of those things that can come into Construction Suite as well, and you'll be able to pull that information into the estimate so that you can do live job costing and do comparisons 
between the different uh, between the estimated costs and the actual costs or profitability reports to show you how much you spent versus how much you made and things like that um, of course these reports will all be based on the information that you're sharing between construction suite and quickbooks and there are two places that you'll need to make some configurations to in order to get the right level of detail and get the best results out of this integration now the first one's gonna take place here in Construction Suite. When you open up an estimate and you take a look at the QuickBooks integration tab for any primary estimate, there's an option over here to go through the QuickBooks initial setup. Now we're gonna step through this right now, but I do wanna make sure that you guys understand that the QuickBooks initial setup is a global set of settings that tells Construction Suite how to communicate with QuickBooks. This is gonna determine what shows up in your chart of accounts from our program. It's gonna show what, it's going to determine what shows up in the items list as well. And if you make any changes to this after you get started, it's Construction Suite will not go to QuickBooks and just change items around or accounts around or anything like that. We will only ever create new content that fits the changes that you're making in the initial setup. Now this is the first reason why I like having this brand new QuickBooks company file. Going from the initial setup, you'll be able to go through and make a couple of different decisions based on how much information goes over without necessarily making these changes to your live QuickBooks company file. And this just allows you to go in there and kind of play around with the settings a little bit. So that said, we'll go through these and kind of talk about them so that you guys don't have to learn too much on, on um, from trial and error. You can just dive right in. And it starts here with the main accounting type that you guys are going to be working with. Now, there's really two main branches to accounting for construction companies, um, several subsections, but the two that I work with the most are either going to be cost of goods sold or construction work in progress. Um, the biggest difference between the two tends to be the timeline for your jobs, um, for the most part. Uh, I find that people who do cost of goods sold style accounting have shorter projects that don't tend to overlap years. Uh, most of these are going to be six to eight month projects or less. Um, and generally speaking, an identifying mark with a cost of goods sold accounting style is uh, as the builder or, or as the um, remodeler or whatever it might be, uh, you'll go out and buy the materials required for the job or hire the subcontractors or whatever it is. They'll show up on the job site and do whatever they need to do or get uh, included as part of the job. And then you'll get reimbursed from the customer. You'll charge the customer for everything that you guys have used on that job. So you pay for it, you use it, and then you get paid for it. And you don't have any assets invested in the job, or at least not many. So at any given time, you should be basically even keel on that job. If you were to stop in the middle of a project, assuming that you get reimbursed for everything that you already did, you should be okay. Um, so again, the big part to this is you go to the store, you buy the things you need, you use them on the job, your customer pays you back. That's cost of goods sold. The construction work in progress, on the other hand, is all about assets and liabilities. And I find that it's very common for large commercial contractors who have jobs that last two, three, five years, or for production builders or, or people who will build a house completely from scratch without a client and then turn around and sell the entire home. Um, now, the reason that work in progress is a little different, um, in this case, you're investing assets in the house. And, and the more you build on that house, as the example here, um, the greater the asset that house represents to your company. Now, once the house is completed, it becomes a liability to your company until you can sell it off. So work in progress is all about assets and liabilities, cost of goods sold are COGS accounts or expense accounts and income accounts. And that's really the difference between these. But the nice thing here is these are just gonna be default settings. From here, if you click to the next page, this is what allows you to determine how much detail is gonna show up in the chart of accounts. If you're brand new to QuickBooks and you're working with an accountant or a book bookkeeper, they may have a chart of accounts or, or a, a set of accounts that they prefer. And it's usually a good thing to go ahead and make sure that the construction suite account settings will match that. In my case, QuickBooks already has a few accounts that I will eventually tie into, so I don't necessarily need construction suite to create anything new. Instead, I'd like to map it those the items that we'll be sending over into the accounts that I want in QuickBooks. And the easiest way to make sure that that happens is to send the items over and then map them when they get there. Um, so that said, I need something to integrate to, to me that new items are being created 
And the easiest way to do this is to create an account like should be zero that should never have an account balance. For me, this represents a new item that's been created in QuickBooks, and it gives me the opportunity to go in and point that item to the correct account so that Construction Suite is feeding those accounts properly from that point moving forward. This is why I have should be zero set up here, but it can always be changed. The other possibilities that you'll have going from Construction Suite to QuickBooks include creating an account for every category that you have in Construction Suite. Uh, for those of you who joined us yesterday, you'll know that the categories that I have in this estimate are planning, foundation, framing, and so on. Ultimately, all the little tabs down here at the bottom become accounts in the chart of accounts if you select this option. The third option in this list is going to be to create an account for every category and subcategory. Uh, effectively, this will take the project totals page of your estimate and turn that into the chart of accounts as well. And that's this third option down here. Now again, for me, I tend to prefer that level of detail in the items list, not the chart of accounts. So I'm going to go back up to this create a single account, and that'll be my option here. The account type is going to be pre-selected based on what you chose on the first page, but you can always go through and switch it out to an expense or a fixed asset, another asset, whatever you guys want to put in here. I'll leave cost of goods sold for now. We'll click next. And this is where you get to choose the level of detail for your items list. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I like to have the categories and subcategories showing up in the items list. But first and foremost, it's important to make sure the construction suite is actually going to be using items as part of this integration. Otherwise, you're just going to be feeding information over to QuickBooks for the expense accounting, but you're not going to be able to do any job costing for it. If you want to do job costing and you really want to take advantage of what construction suite and QuickBooks can do when they integrate, make sure that you use items. Um, now, beneath this, you'll have an option to use a parent item. My QuickBooks company file is completely devoid of items right now. I have nothing, so there's no reason for me to organize them or lump them all together under a single parent item. So I'm not going to use this option. If you guys are connecting to a, to a QuickBooks company file that's been in use for years, it might not be a bad idea to use this parent item just so that you guys can easily recognize the new UDA items as opposed to those old items that you guys have been using in the past. So that's really the benefit here is just to help you differentiate between those items. Um, but then the detail that goes over to the items list is going to be in one of three options. <clears throat> so some of you might want a very short and sweet items list in QuickBooks. You might like the idea of just having one planning item, and it doesn't matter if the planning item is $100,000 on a job, just so long as it's just one item. Now, if that's the case, and you see this planning item up here, you can select the first option to create an item for just the categories in the estimate and construction suite. Now, just like with the accounts, the items list would then be planning, the next item would be foundation, the next one would be framing, and so on, through each of these different category tabs. And that's it. That's all you'll see in the items list. So it summarizes everything, and it keeps the items list very neat and clean, but you're not getting a whole lot of information out of that, especially not when it comes back to making sure that what you estimated is pretty close to what you spent. Now, uh, if you need a lot more detail, you might go with option number three. Now, this takes it to the other extreme. Um, if you select option number three, then Construction Suite will create an item in the QuickBooks items list for every category, subcategory, and individual line item that gets used in the, in the estimate in Construction Suite. So this means that you're going to have an item pop up in the items list called Foundation. And underneath Foundation, you'll have sub-items like Site Work and Footers Labor and Footers Materials. And under these items, you'll have sub-sub-items like um, under footers materials, you might have um, form boards and, and anchor bolts and things like that. Or maybe that's under foundation materials, I'm not sure. Uh, but ultimately, using option three will send to QuickBooks all the sticks and bricks that go into making the, the whatever unit it is that you're working on. So you get tons and tons of information in the QuickBooks items list. The downside is you end up with tons and tons of information in the QuickBooks items list. Um, and it makes it a little bit more di difficult to, to navigate and find the right items and job cost properly. So this is where option two comes into play. This is my personal preference because it's the happy medium between the two. This option selects all the categories and subcategories to send over to QuickBooks and populate those into the items list. And ultimately, if you select this option, your QuickBooks items list will look almost exactly like your project totals page. 
This selection gives you this, but in your QuickBooks items list. Now my QuickBooks items list is empty right now, so that's exactly what I'll get, and there's not gonna be a whole lot of clutter. But it's important to note too that after you make your selection for the level of detail for the item, you choose the correct item type to send over to QuickBooks as well, and you'll do that here in the top right corner. Now the item type that you're looking at is gonna be one of three things typically. It's either gonna be service items, which means that there's a chance that these could show up on paychecks, you could also select non-inventory parts. This is the only item type that'll actually allow you to change the item type to service or inventory later. Or of course, you've got the inventory parts as well. Now your inventory parts, as you might imagine, these are gonna be all the things that you keep in the shed out back or in your warehouse or in your showroom or whatever it is. Inventory parts are great because you can keep track of counts in QuickBooks. The downside is you can't turn an inventory part into a non-inventory part or a service item, so you couldn't bill, um, you, you couldn't put inventory parts on paychecks. So it just, it, there's no blend there. So you can do them as service items and then you can't change them away from service items, but they can't show up on paychecks. You can do them as non inventory parts, but they can't be used anywhere other than the standard transactions like estimates and bills and such. Um, or you can do inventory parts and keep track of your inventory. Take, take your pick. The default is to go with service items because again, it's just kind of my preference on the default and you'll go from there. Now on the last page here, or the next to last page, this is your income account or your revenue account that you're going to be looking at here. Uh, if you're using COGS, it's going to be income. You can label it here. If you're using uh, WIP or construction work in progress, then it's probably going to be a liability account. And you'll be able to sw swap it out there. So click next and then make sure that you back up your QuickBooks company file again and then click finish. And now construction suite is ready to communicate with QuickBooks. The next step in this process is to make sure that QuickBooks is ready to communicate. So let's switch back over to QuickBooks in this case and take a look at some of the QuickBooks preferences. Um, now again, just to make sure that everything is going to be integrating well, you want to make sure that you're logged into QuickBooks as admin in single user mode the first time. Um, when you're making these changes, you'll still have to be in that, logged into QuickBooks as admin in single user mode, so let's just go ahead and get it all taken care of right now. Uh, in this case, I need you to all go to the edit menu and go to preferences and let's take a look at some of the options that Construction Suite will try to take advantage of as long as it's configured to do so in QuickBooks. Um, now first and foremost, if you go to the Integrated Applications tab and take a look under Company Preferences, this is where you'll see which programs are allowed to integrate with this QuickBooks company file. So I've got on cost in the list, um, but there could be another UDA program or two that might need to show up. Um, so just make sure that it looks something like this. And if you want the program to integrate, make sure that the boxes are checked on the left hand side. You'll also want to make sure that these two options at the top are unchecked because these two options block people from connecting a program to QuickBooks. So if these are checked, Construction Suite can't connect. So that's the first one. Next up, let's step down into the items and inventory section. Uh, from items and inventory, you'll be able to se select the option here to allow purchase orders to be created from Construction Suite in QuickBooks. Now, not all of you are gonna be using the QuickBooks purchase orders. I personally am a humongous fan of POs because it allows Construction Suite to push over everything to QuickBooks that belongs on the bills to, that are going out to vendors and subcontractors. I like this option because you can pre-populate all of the details for the bill and now the bookkeeper just needs to go in and convert the purchase order into a bill and they'll have everything laid out for them already that's supposed to be there for the job. You don't have to worry about getting it approved through five different people. You don't have to worry about items that may not belong on there. You're literally giving the bookkeeper the exact list that's supposed to show up and then it's just a matter of confirming everything that comes in from the vendor on the paper copy. So. All of the data entry is done, all you have to do is scan another piece of paper and then click OK, or maybe adjust the dollar amounts a little bit or something like that, but ultimately it makes it very easy. So again, items in inventory, go to company preferences and select this option to turn on purchase orders at least. After this, you'll probably have to click OK to make sure that QuickBooks converts this option, on, to, turns this on for everybody. So uh, do that and then come back to the edit menu, go back to preferences. And next up is going to be, uh, I think it's jobs and, yeah, jobs and estimates. 
Now from Construction Suite, we will give you the ability to create progress invoices. You'll be able to create these based on your categories or based on some percent complete or anything like that. Uh, sometimes though, it helps to be able to do this in QuickBooks as well. If you want to take a QuickBooks estimate and use that estimate to do progress invoicing, then you'll want to go to the Jobs and Estimates portion and turn on progress invoicing. Go ahead and do that now and make sure that it gets taken care of as well. Uh, same thing, when you click OK on this one, it's going to make sure that all the windows get closed down so that it can turn on progress invoicing properly. So go back to Edit, Preferences, and there's one more thing that I'll need you guys to confirm. <coughs> the last option we need to confirm is going to be found under the Reports and Graphs tab. Now, Construction Suite and QuickBooks are going to be talking back and forth using reports and pulling the information from those reports to fill in like the actual costs in your estimate or to populate as, uh, transactions in QuickBooks from Construction Suite. Now that said, Construction Suite and QuickBooks are going to be doing almost all of this communication using item names and it's important that the item names match, which means that in the reports, when you're showing the items in those reports, you want to make sure that it only uses the name of the item and doesn't try to tack on all sorts of excess information like the descriptions and things like that. So make sure in this case that when you're using the reports, you're only using the name for those reports, uh, the name of the item. So again, go to Reports and Graphs, go to Company Preferences, and select Name Only for Reports-Show Items By. This will make sure the Construction Suite understands everything that's coming back from QuickBooks, and it will help prevent any hurdles that might crop up later. So do that now as well. Again, Edit, Preferences, Reports and Graphs. Go to Company Preferences and select Report Items, a uh, Report Named Items by or Show Items by Name Only. All right, so now QuickBooks is ready. We've got Construction Suite set up, we've got QuickBooks set up, and now you can click that magic button to send the information over to QuickBooks from Construction Suite. There's two buttons actually. So we've set up all the information within an estimate template, and we've got all the right item names. Uh, be they categories or subcategories or line items, whatever you're going to be sending. Now at this point, since everything is done, I recommend you go to the Export to QuickBooks section and export all of your items over to QuickBooks to allow Construction Suite to create everything that we need in the items list. So as I mentioned earlier, my QuickBooks items list is completely empty. I, got, I have nothing in it. Uh, in order to populate this list, rather than doing it by hand or anything like that, we can go back to the estimate, click on Export to QuickBooks, and select the option to export all of your QuickBooks items. This will tell Construction Suite to create everything that we need in QuickBooks. QuickBooks is going to go ahead and confirm that this is what you're trying to do, so same as before, yes, whenever the QuickBooks company file is open, and done. And it'll start that process. Now as it's going through this process, building out everything that we need, uh, I'm going to take a brief pause to go over and take a look at a couple of questions. Um, so we'll let this think. Uh, question number one, if I use service items, how do we track material costs uh, versus income? And uh, that's a great question, good question. And uh, in this case, as you're sending the information over to QuickBooks, it's going to allow you to populate bills and checks and credit card transactions with the items, regardless of whether or not they're service items. Now, because we're using items and there's an option to use items for invoicing, it's going to take these items and it's going to create them as two-sided items. Every item is going to have an expense account and an income account associated with it in QuickBooks. Now, you'll see this when you go into the items list and you take a look. Here is your income account, UDA construction payment. If you right-click on one of the column headers and customize columns, you can turn on the COGS account as well move that up next to the income account and now you can see the expense side, the income side, and then some other information out to the right. Now uh, this is important too because whenever you use construction cleanup or the, the daily cleanup on a bill or on a paycheck, it's going to assign the cost on that bill or paycheck to the should be zero account, an expense account, cost account, whatever it might be. When you put the same item on an invoice, it's going to show it show up that invoiced amount under the UDA construction payment account. So in QuickBooks, your P&L reports, your balance sheets, and everything like that are going to be tracking the money coming and going 
all of your costs versus your income directly through those those item used on the, the different thing. Construction suite, on the other hand, we're just going to find the item and we're going to put those two numbers side by side. It'll show you your cost, it'll show you your income, and those numbers are going to be right there available next to your estimated costs or your estimated values in construction suite. You'll see how these work in just a couple of moments as we send over some transactions. Um, so good question there. Uh, next one on the integration setup. Why can't you select all types of items? Um, service, non-inventory, other, etc. Uh, do you mean it'll convert a non-inventory part to a service item? Um, no, we don't convert anything. And the biggest reason why we don't allow you to select multiple types is because of QuickBooks, actually. Yeah, when this information gets over to QuickBooks, QuickBooks is going to try to lump them all together under certain parents and things like that. And if you ever use, first of all, if you ever use a parent item, everything that falls under that parent item has to have the exact same item type. So it's, since appliances is a service item, appliance labor has to be a service item. It can't be anything else. Same for appliances here. Also has to be a service item. Bath hardware is a service item, so everything underneath it also has to be service. You couldn't have materials be non-inventory and labor be service because it's going to force them all to be the same type. Now in this case, if you do want to mix and match, if you've got a category here like appliances and all of the items in the appliances category need to be service items, that's fine. You can leave those as service items, but if you wanted bath hardware to be non-inventory parts, I would recommend you send everything over to QuickBooks as a non-inventory part and then just convert those service items to service items once they get there so that Construction Suite doesn't mix anything up and cause any confusion, but you can still get what you need out of QuickBooks. Now, as far as we're concerned, the item type is irrelevant. All I need for the QuickBooks integration to work properly is an item name here, and this item name has to exactly match what's in the estimate. Not the items database, not the items list or anything like that. This needs to match my estimate category in Construction Suite in order for Construction Suite and QuickBooks to recognize that these are the same thing. So this becomes um, a little bit more evident as you guys start to work with importing actual costs and everything like that. But just uh, again to kind of repeat this. I have a foundation category in Construction Suite in my estimate. I also have a foundation item in the items list in QuickBooks. Underneath my foundation category, I have subcategories, site work, footers, labor, footers, materials. These become items underneath the, footer, the foundation item here, where we've got labor, materials, footers, footers, labor, footers, materials, concrete slab, and everything like that. So ultimately, that's how it's going to work. So once again, when you're going back and forth between these, when you originally create them in Construction Suite, we're going to pay attention to what you set up as your item type and send it over that way. Once it gets to QuickBooks, though, the only thing that matters is the name. If you want to change the name, then you've got to make that change in both programs. Everything else about that item can be changed once it gets to QuickBooks, like the income account and the expense account, the descriptions for the items, the default costs. None of that matters for us. The only thing that matters is the item name. Um, so let's see, that should take care of a few of these questions. There, it looks like there were some follow-ups, but I tried to get those as we went. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. There is a follow-up on that one. Why would you want um, a certain thing to be a service item instead of a non-inventory part? Um, ultimately, the non-inventory parts allow you to convert them to other types, but other than that, they're not really special. Service items are special in that you can't turn it into a different type of an item, but it can be used on a paycheck, potentially. Um, and this is why I normally default everything to being a service item, because putting it in as a non-inventory part doesn't provide me an additional benefit. And if you're not using inventory through this integration, then there's no reason why everything couldn't be a service item. There's, a, there's not too much of a difference there. Um, Follow-up question we kind of touched on already. If you change the item type, does it sync back? Yes, it does. As long as the item name is the same, it will come back into Construction Suite to populate job costs and everything like that just fine. So, But there you go. Uh, ultimately, this takes all the information, and we have an items list in QuickBooks now that we can work with, and you've done most of the heavy lifting. We have items in QuickBooks. We have items in Construction Suite. We now need to start sending over some of the details for the job. So once you have your items in QuickBooks and you have your information here put together for a live estimate in Construction Suite, 
You should never send the estimate to QuickBooks until you get a signed contract. Money does not need to get spent on the job until you know you're going to get paid back for it. So make sure that you get those signed contracts or make sure that you're ready to start on your building or your house or whatever it is, if it's yours. Um, and that should be the first time that you send it over. Now, the first step in this process when you're ready to send it to QuickBooks should always be creating a QuickBooks estimate. Even if you guys don't plan on doing too much job costing once you get over to QuickBooks, it's always a good idea to start here because you might decide to later. And it doesn't hurt anything to send these over, but it definitely helps. So the options that you're looking at here are gonna be available for the QuickBooks estimate here. Uh, ultimately, the very first option that you hit, the level of detail is going to determine what shows up in your estimate once it gets to QuickBooks. Now, based on the selections that I made in the QuickBooks initial setup, my only option is to send over categories and subcategories, which means that the estimate is gonna look just like my project totals once it gets over to QuickBooks. If you selected the option to send over categories, subcategories, and items as items in QuickBooks, then you could potentially select to send over the entire workbook, which would actually send over all the sticks and bricks to QuickBooks. I didn't select that, which is why it shows as grayed out on my side. Now next up, it's going to show you what the customer job will look like once it gets into QuickBooks, so that's good. And then we can select a few different options down here to make sure that the information shows up in that estimate transaction properly. First of all, I always make sure that you include the company overhead and margin. Now you don't have to keep it as a separate line item, I prefer to, so I will, but you could always prorate it into everything else, um, and that will add it in as a markup once it gets over to QuickBooks. To add to that markup, you could potentially have line item markups in your construction suite estimate covering the cost of waste or, or labor burden or something like that. If you do include these things, then you can use this checkbox to use line item markups. If you want those line item markups to be included as part of the QuickBooks item rate, meaning it's going to be part of the cost and not part of the income, then you want to check this last box. So again, using labor rate as an example, if you add a 60% markup to all of your labor items, your labor rate becomes higher and you wanna make sure that you include that here using the include markup in QuickBooks rate. Now, if you're not using line item markups, uncheck these and you're fine. Uh, same with taxes. The, the tax number that we're looking at here is how much it cost you to buy the items. So this is your cost plus tax. And if you check this box, it'll send that tax over to QuickBooks as part of the cost of the item. Now QuickBooks will also give you the ability to add an additional tax onto this. For some of you guys, this is gonna be very important. If you're working with um, you know, taxes that you have to apply to a contract value for your customers, this is different. This is a different animal altogether. That's gonna go at the end of the estimate or that's gonna go at the end of the transactions in QuickBooks. The number that we're looking at here is just how much tax did you pay to buy a two by four to use that on the job site. So that's what this number is. Check the box if you've used that in the estimate and click okay to send over your information. Now again, the nice thing about this is Construction Suite is going to create the customer. It's gonna create the job and then it's gonna use all those items that we sent over to create an estimate uh, for that job. And that's the perfect starting point. Once that's es that estimate is done, you'll see all the information there in QuickBooks that we need in order to make this a successful project. And we have now begun this process. So it's gonna switch over from the estimate, uh, from the items list rather, to the estimate, and here it is. And you can see that it does follow almost the exact same process. It starts with planning, it goes through foundation, then framing, exterior windows and doors, plumbing, and so on. Now at this point, if you have like a deposit or anything like that on the job, like a 10% down or anything, you can create your invoice. And because we turned on progress invoicing, you've got three options. You can either invoice for the whole thing, doesn't make any sense. I wish we could do that, but not always an option. You could invoice for a percentage of the whole estimate, like 10% perhaps, or you could do it for an individual percentage of individual line items. All three good options. You can always use this to create the invoice and then go back in and change it later. You can also go back to the estimate in construction suite and you'll have a few additional options from here as well. Um, when you generate the invoice in QuickBooks from our program, from construction suite, you'll be able to select different categories to invoice for. And then you can select a percentage for these categories that you guys might wanna invoice. On this screen, you'll also be able to apply things like retainage. 
if your customer is going to withhold a certain percent, percent retainage on all of the invoices that you're sending to them, uh, this is the perfect place to put that in as well. And Construction Suite will be able to keep tabs on those numbers too uh, as they're going through. Now with that said, you can go through and make whatever selections you need to and uh, click OK to send that invoice over to QuickBooks and you will end up with an invoice like so. I decided to do it for 50% of everything that was in there, which is why the quantity is 0.5. Here's all the items that I selected to use. There's my subtotal and less retainage. We've got some retainage withheld there. And uh, everything else has gone over so that we can get that first invoice together. Um, now, of course, this is going to be standard. If you guys have QuickBooks integration, meaning you've got the pro or contractor version of Construction Suite and above, you're all set. Everything that you guys uh, need for creating estimates and invoices and everything like that is here. For those of you who are using the corporate or catalyst versions of Construction Suite and above, you can actually take this invoicing process a step further. Um, in the estimate in Construction Suite, you will find an area for generating an application for payment. This application for payment is going to follow the AIA G702 and G703 application for payment process puts all this information together from your estimates and your invoices to generate a schedule of values for you based on what's been plugged into those estimates and invoices in QuickBooks. So in this case, if you go through and select the application for payment and create a new one, you'll be able to verify the details for the contract and for the pay period. You can select the architect or the engineer or anything like that that you guys need to use. Select any and all invoices that you want to apply on this particular pay, pay app. Add in any materials stored to date. Uh, oh, sorry, accept any additional change orders, then do materials stored to date. I have none, so I'll click next again. And this will allow you to generate your app for payment. Uh, again, it usually doesn't take more than a couple of seconds to build one of these app for pays and it does follow the AIA specified format, so you can't really customize it too much, otherwise it doesn't fit the format anymore. Um, but your end result will look something like this. There's G702, the cover sheet, shows how much we've certified this period, no change orders applied for in this case. Uh, G703, our continuation sheet, is here. To put in all the items that we need, uh, it's going to show how much we've applied for this period. There it is. And retainage that was withheld from this period's pay app. And then at the end on continuation sheet number four, uh, we've got the total for the scheduled values and then everything else that belongs. So that's it. You've got an application for payment at this point. And from here, you can email it out to your customers. You can print it out if you want a hard copy. Just make sure that you come in here and click finish. And... Um, there you go. Oh, I uh, might have not closed one of those files down all the way. There we go. And I'll finish. Yeah, we can always come back to that. There's other files that I still have to close. But uh, ultimately, that puts the information together in the app for pay. The AI forms are really quick and easy to, to uh, fill out in this case. And it certainly saves a ton of time. I've had clients tell me before that um, prior to using this format, it would take them up to 20 hours to put together that app for pay. In this case, it took us, what, three minutes? Ten minutes with me talking, but like <laughs> less than three minutes normally. Uh, either way, let's press on. So we've got invoices. You've sent out the information to get paid. Let's talk now about how you can put together all of the information for creating purchase orders and then tracking how much everything cost. Now, before I dive into the purchase orders, let's go ahead and import from QuickBooks all the invoiced amounts that we've created. I'm going to be comparing against these numbers a couple of times, so it's good to have them in the estimate and construction suite. It's also really important to note that if it's a, anything that you will be making on this job, if it's an invoiced amount, it's something that you've sent over to your customers, you'll have to see that by importing invoiced amounts from QuickBooks. Invoices in QuickBooks always mean what you're sending to your client. Always. Actual costs are going to be show whatever shows up on the vendor side, the bills, the checks, the credit card transactions, the paychecks. That's all going to be part of your actuals. What you've sent to the client shows up when you import invoiced amounts. Now to pre-populate those actuals, like we were talking about earlier, you can create purchase orders from Construction Suite that go over to QuickBooks. Now these purchase orders are going to be basically a contract outline. Um, 
when you agree to purchase materials from a supplier or a subcontractor or something like that, you will create this as a purchase order in QuickBooks so that QuickBooks knows exactly what belongs for that job with that vendor. Uh, so in this case, you can always go through and select from the estimate the area that you're going to be sending to a specific vendor. And you can select the QuickBooks vendor from the drop-down menu here, and that'll give it to you there. <coughs> and uh, once this goes over to QuickBooks, it again, it just puts together the full outline for everything that needs to go to Ajax Supply for the foundation section, I think it was, that I selected. Let's go over to QuickBooks and double check. Frame. Sorry, it was the framing section. Um, so there's the purchase order. It's an outline of everything that goes to the vendor for that particular section on the job. In the PO, you can see not only the items, but also which customer job it goes to, and then the total amount for this as well. So save and close that. And you will now have these transactions associated with the job as well. Now, in this case, let me go back to the customer center and make sure that my Lisa Simpson project is there. Yeah, there it is. Um, because of the way we create these and because of the way QuickBooks handles all these transactions, the only thing that you'll ever see directly associated with the job from the customer center will be your estimates and invoices and credit memos, potentially. Um, the format that we create all of these customers and jobs, of course, customer is always going to be at the top level. Job will also be indented slightly underneath this. And as you send over change orders, you'll see another level indented in slightly underneath again. All of the estimates and invoices, though, will always roll up into the primary job, which is where you'll see all of this information. And uh, as you're going through and tracking it, the balance total that shows up here is only ever going to be the invoice balance, never the open purchase orders or anything like that that you guys might think should be there. All of that information is going to show up back in the vendor center in QuickBooks. If you go take a look under the Ajax Supply vendor, you'll find that purchase order that we just sent over. And if you ever want to double click to open it up, it'll show you that outline again of everything that goes on for the job. Now this too is, um, for, the, for the vendor, this is going to be very similar to what the estimate is for your customer. The estimate shows up, but it doesn't affect the balance. Purchase orders will show up under the vendors, but they also don't affect the balance. In this case though, what you can do is come up to the vendor's drop-down menu and select Enter Bill. And when you're creating these bills and you're entering in new bills, any time that you select a vendor from the drop-down menu here at the top, if they've got a purchase order that's still open, regardless of which job it's open on, QuickBooks will prompt you to use that purchase order to populate a bill. So you can say, yes, in this case, I want to use this purchase order on this bill, and there's all my items. So once again, if we're doing a comparison between the purchase order that went to Ajax Supply and the invoice that I just got from Ajax, everything that shows up on the invoice should be all of the information that shows up here, or part of it. Maybe they didn't invoice us for everything this time. Perhaps it was just the first couple of items. So in this case, we could just zero out the quantity for all of the subsequent items here because they didn't get used. Um, now, oh, don't do that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, I'll leave it for now. Um, but uh, oop. if not, go back and select, select the existing product. This was supposed to be roof decking, so let's just type in roof decking here. Yeah, be careful about this kind of stuff too, guys. If you're a little bit haphazard with your selections, you might end up here. Roof decking materials, there we go. Zero, zero, zero. All right, everything else is still going to be the same. Uh, in this case, QuickBooks will now recognize that the purchase order is going to be partially filled, so there's still the other half of the PO that's going to be outstanding. But in this case, we've got some of the information. Now, let's say that invoice that we got from the client or, or from the vendor from Ajax Supply says that the pricing information was a little different. Framing labor went down. Maybe um, they got done a little bit faster than they thought they would, and they thought they'd cut us a discount. I know, fat chance, but we're going to play pretend here, so we might as well. Now, the flip side to this is um, maybe the floor system materials were a little bit more expensive. The cost of lumber went up. Let's say it went up substantially, just so that we can see how this information is going to show up back in Construction Suite. Uh, and um, this is what you end up for the bill. So now we've got this $40,000 actual cost. And when you commit that back in Construction Suite, we can now import actual costs to see how much we've paid on this job. So once again, actuals are going to be your checks, your 
paychecks, your bills, your credit card charges, and you can go through and select any or all of these that you would like to see, and then click OK to import them. Now when you do import these, it's going to take all of the information for all the bills and checks and credit cards and everything like that, and it's going to pull that into an actual cost column here, QuickBooks Actuals, and it's going to do a quick little calculation side by side. You're going to see the estimated cost, or the total price here. You're going to see the QuickBooks Actual, and then it's going to give you the variance between the two. So there you can see that I'm under budget on framing labor, over budget on floor system materials, and uh, over budget numbers are always going to show up in the red so that you can immediately recognize those. Now you can always do quick little comparisons between them as well. So in this case, if you wanted to import your committed costs also, I'd recommend instead of just importing all committed costs, in this case, we've got a partially fulfilled purchase order. So I want to import only what's remaining on that. So we're going to import open purchase orders and just the partially unreceived POs. Clicking OK in this case is going to pull in what remains on the contracts that we have out there with subcontractors or suppliers. This is going to show up in the committed cost column. Oh, let's go back to that project totals page. And if you notice now, we've got committed costs turned on and there's our remaining balance that we've still got outstanding. So how does this help? Um, we've now created some actuals and invoiced amounts and committed costs and we're taking a look at these numbers and uh, now that the information is coming back into construction suite you can see how much we've estimated for framing labor how much we've spent on framing labor whether or not we're over or under budget the committed cost would show us how much is remaining under contract so in this case the fact that I have zero left in contract tells me that this three thousand dollars is grippage we've we've overestimated what we thought it would cost and we've made up ground. Now I've only gotten paid for half of this so I know that this means that since we've paid for all of it I need to make sure that we invoice for the rest of it later. Um, the next section down though under floor systems the opposite is true. I have slipped on floor system materials. So I, there's still nothing left in contract so I know that this is where it should end at this point barring any change orders or anything like that that come up but now what I'm looking at is we've gone under budget on frame, framing labor and over budget here and I'm still net over budget about a thousand dollars so we will probably need to try to make up that ground elsewhere or at this point we could also tap into the contingency for this because the cost has gone up but these are important things to note and you can see that right here in line just by importing the information and taking a look um, and that's the benefit that you'll get from this this information is also going to be available whenever you run reports from construction suite but it's important to note that the reports are designed to pull a different set of information we're not going to just show you the exact same numbers that you're looking at here in the estimate. Instead, what you'll get from those reports typically is um, like the over, balance, the over budget report would show you just floor system materials because this is the only thing that's over budget right now. Your remaining balance report will show you almost everything though because you've got a remaining balance on everything except for floor system materials. That's over budget. You can do an estimate versus actuals and it's going to show you everything that has a, a a variance basically if it's got a variance of zero then it doesn't show up on the estimate versus actuals because that's fulfilled completely and it was perfect so the estimate versus actuals report shows you discrepancies either slippage or grippage and, and you'll get that there and uh, so on there's a variety of different reports and each of them has a, a pretty intuitive name for them so um, you can go through and run some of these reports to see the results of that. The other nice part about this is as you save this information and it commits it back into the construction suite system you'll be able to take a look at the the numbers and the impact on the profitability chart from the today page or from the project itself if you come back into the main construction suite interface where do we put that there it is so let's go back and take a look at the Simpson tenant imp uh, improvement project and refresh the value so now we can see actual costs and committed costs and everything like that you'll see the numbers coming in if you come back to the today page you'll also be able to see on the profitability here where that shows up uh, oh, actually, that's not true. I've still got that set up as an opportunity. Um, this is an important thing, too. Construction Suite now has the ability to differentiate between opportunities, which are jobs that are not under contract yet, and then projects, which are jobs that are under contract. 
if it's an opportunity, it's not going to show up in the profitability or the WIP report or anything like that. If it's a project, it will. Or if it's an opportunity that's been closed one. So in this case, I didn't see Simpson on there, but I want to see it on there. So I'm going to right click on the opportunity and set the opportunity status to closed one. This now allows that project to show up on the today page. There it is. And you can start to see how much money we've spent, how much we've made, uh, cost impact and everything like that right here on the profitability on the main page. You'll also see it pop up in the work in progress report that we generate in Construction Suite. Now this is a little different. This WIP report is a little different than how QuickBooks handles the account. This WIP report is designed to show you how much you estimated, how much you budgeted for your costs, and whether or not you're on target for a lot of these sections. So all of this information is really just your way of helping keep track of your gross profitability on each of your jobs. And our target would be to make sure that all of these numbers stay just as profitable as you estimated. We don't, I, I'm not a big fan of slippage or grippage. Any positive or negative values in this column for me are a bad thing. If we end up slipping, that means that we spent more money than we estimated, and you'll see that here. You'll have a negative percentage, meaning that you're upside down on the job. If it's a positive number, it means that you gripped. You ended up making more money than you thought you would, and that's actually another trap. If you made more money, great. Making more money than you thought you would make is always a good thing, but it also means that you're overestimating the cost of jobs, and you may end up overestimating several jobs and losing bids because you bid you, you estimated too high. So you'll estimate yourself out of potential projects if your grippage is too high. If your slippage is too high, you end up losing money on jobs, and you don't want that either. So as close to zero as possible in this one is great. Um, I usually shoot for within about 2% because that's where my contingency sits. But otherwise, you can see the results up here along the top, too. This is your profitability chart, and it shows you how profitable your jobs are doing. Um, I obviously have a very wide array of stuff going on here. Sometimes the numbers aren't exactly accurate. But as you're looking through this, you can see some of the jobs that are more profitable than others and everything like that. Um, and it's just kind of mapping out your profitability as you go. Banks w will ask for this kind of stuff, especially if you ever apply for, for a... Um, uh, additional line of credit or anything like that. They'll ask for something along these lines just to see how well you've done. You can take this and export it or print it, send it off to them, and they will be thrilled with you for it. In fact, it'll make you look that much better just because you can turn this around for them so quickly. We also find that a lot of commercial contractors will use these kind of tools to maintain profitability on extremely long jobs. Um, some uh, remodeling organizations as well, like Remodelers Advantage is one of the, the um, partner organizations that we work with, and they require these of a lot of their members too. So have this information, gather it together, and people are going to want you to do this because it really does help make more profitable companies if you can look at something like this and track in real time how you're doing on your jobs. Now again, this is a side effect of using the QuickBooks integration because everything that you're pulling in from Construction Suite or pulling in from QuickBooks saves into your estimate, which then is used to populate this table, this WIP report, and if you look through, it's going to show you how much you guys have in unbilled revenue or underbilled revenue, how much you guys have remaining in contract and everything like that. So again, there's plenty of detail here. And just like with any other table in Construction Suite, you can right click on a column header to turn on or off various different information. So set this up the way you want to see it using the information that's available within the system and just keep an eye on it from time to time. You know, once a few times a month, maybe once a week or something like that, just to make sure that your profitability is going well. Um, or maybe just set it up so that you guys come in here and view this after you pay all your bills for the previous month. I find that usually happens within the first week or two weeks of each month. So if you just come in here and look at it at the 15th of every month to see how profitable you were on, on all your jobs from last month's billing cycle and everything like that, yeah, go for it. Go to town. You'll be able to do it. Uh, so, of course, this is for maintaining profitability on jobs, but some of the things that you'll see in here as well include your original contract price, price plus change orders. And then you've got your original job cost plus the cost of these change orders. So, obviously, change orders are going to be a factor in this, and it's going to come into play when you're sending the information over to QuickBooks as well. So let's take a moment to go back to this estimate and set up a change order so that you can see what that process is going to look like. So, in this case, We've got the estimate. We've already sent it over to QuickBooks because we got that contract, and now it's a matter of putting together some of the additional information to get the integration with QuickBooks um, to pick up on change orders. 
So typically what will happen is you're working with a change order. Um, there may be a section in here that's going to be adjusted. Maybe the client changed their mind on something or um, there's been a, a change to the specs uh, of the job or something like that. But ultimately when you're creating change orders, it'll start with one of the areas that the change will impact. So when we're managing these change orders or these adjustments that are coming through, you'll go in and start with the first section that the change is going to apply to. Next, I want you to come up to the Estimating tab and select the Add Change Order option. Now, the Change Order Wizard is going to take you through the whole process, and it's going to be pretty painless. So if you take a look at this first page, you're either going to be creating a brand new change order, or you're going to make an adjustment to an already existing change order. So pick which one you want here. I don't have a change order, so we're going with a new one. On the next page, you can name that change order and provide a brief description. Um, whatever you guys want to put in here is going to be great. This is the name of the change order as it's going to appear in QuickBooks. So make sure that you get that one done right. And then the description underneath this is going to show up in things like contracts, and it's going to be your easy way to get the information available. This change order will also upgrade to or upload to Construction Online as soon as you publish it. So keep that in mind too. Whatever you put in here can become available online if you choose to let it. So next. I always recommend setting this to pending until you get a signed contract, in which case you'll turn it to accepted. So next. And this is where you can put together all the different subcategories. Um, in my estimate, I have everything typically organized by trade. So if the customer is going to go through and, and change several of the trades, we'll want to make sure that you can go through and select all of the different adjustments that are going to be made. Fair enough. Um, add them all in. The checkbox off to the right hand side allows you to turn an existing subcategory into a change order subcategory. Um, so sometimes this will come in play, other times we'll just click next um, to finish it out and we'll be all set. So now I've got subcategories and you can tell that they're change orders because they're going to be hashed out in uh, yellow here. And uh, for me I'm just going to put in a couple of lump sums for the change order itself. Ooh. Need to put it into the cost, let's say 1250 there. And you'll also notice that there's going to be a little change orders section over here on the estimate summary. This is really, really handy because it allows you to navigate throughout the entire estimate to the next piece of this client this client change order. So you click client changes, takes us to electrical fixtures, which is the next subcategory. So here, same as before, I'm going to make this a lump sum, and we're going to say that there's going to be an extra four hundred dollars in lighting fixtures or electrical fixtures, click it again, and this will take us to the next, next piece. There we are, HVAC system, uh, also going to be a lump sum, but for HVAC, let's say that this is going to cost $2,000. Uh, so, uh, that's it, that's everything that I want for the change order, so we'll save it. And you can see that we now have a total balance of $36.50 for the change order. And at this point, before going too much further, I need to go ahead and pull up that change order contract. So it's back to the reports tab for us. And in this case, if you click on the customer reports drop down, you'll find change order documents near the top of the list. Now your change order documents are gonna be either cost plus contracts, fixed fee contracts, or an itemized proposal. I'm just gonna go straight for the cost plus contract. Um, so uh, that's a lie, we're gonna go with a fixed fee contract. So it's gonna pull in all the information for the change order. Let's select the client changes. There's the different subsections, and we're doing a fixed fee contract, so there we are. Now, why I love this contract is it's going to show us what the original contract sum was. Then it's going to show us the estimated value, which is going to be changes based on previously accepted change orders. I have none, so that's going to be the same. Next line will be the value of this change order, and then the last line will be the new grand total, assuming that we select to approve this change order. So if you scroll through, there's a brief description of what's going to be included. Here's how much the contract was. Here's how much it is based on all previously accepted change orders. Here's the value of the change order. And here's where we will be as soon as the customer signs off on this. So there you go. That's everything that we might need for this. And if we go to save this, send it out to the client via email or upload it to construction online or what have you, then um, get it signed and come back. This would be when the estimate needs to open up again and select accepted under the status for the change order. 
Now, marking this as accepted at this point actually prompts you to send the information over to QuickBooks. Should, again, be quick and easy. So flag it as accepted, click OK, and now it'll ask for an outline for what's going to be included. Then it'll go over to QuickBooks and create the sub job for you so that you can have the change order separated out. It'll create the estimate transaction for you there, including any items or accounts or anything like that that would be required to make this happen. And, um, oh, did I click OK? Uh, yeah, I did. There we go. And there you have it. That's the change order estimate in this case. And like I mentioned, this is going to be available to you back in the customer center. Let's jump back to the customer center. And you'll see it underneath the customer, underneath the job, and then beneath. Uh, yeah, it's going to show up underneath the customer job. And there's that client changes. <coughs> And uh, this is always how we'll help you guys track change orders because we found that the old default way that QuickBooks does it, where it just kind of posts a little memo on the estimate or the transaction, um, well, that's really, really easy to accidentally overwrite. So in this case, you'll always be able to track these as a sub job. And I like this too because now you'll always be able to have an entry in QuickBooks for every contract that you have signed with a client. Um, so it just helps keep up with all of that information and it allows you to track the difference in costs between your original contract costs and then your subcon or your uh, change order costs. So in this case, you know the the framing costs that you guys might have gone over could have actually been associated with the change order. So now we could go back in and adjust the bills or the checks or whatever it is to assign those costs to the change order properly, so that Construction Suite will be able to keep up with it in a reasonable way. And it doesn't look like you guys are upside down on on framing labor or whatever it was. Uh, floor system materials, I think it was. But again, um, it should be that easy for putting together the change orders and then of course invoicing for them and everything like that is going to be very straightforward as well. When you generate your next application for payment, that change orders portion will now have an entry in it. It's going to show change order one and you can apply that to the next application for payment which will update your schedule values accordingly and so on and so forth. Um, but for now, this is going to cover most of the integration. Don't forget that as you guys are going through this process, there are three very important things that Construction Suite and QuickBooks share that always need to match. The first one is going to be the name for your contacts. Lisa Simpson only exists as Lisa Simpson in both programs because the name of the contact says it does. If you were to change that contact name in QuickBooks, suddenly we don't have a match for that anymore in Construction Suite, so we've lost it. It doesn't make sense anymore. The same thing happens for number two, which is the job name. In this case, in, in Construction Suite, I called it the Simpsons TI for Tenant Improvement. In QuickBooks, it'll show up the same way, Simpsons TI. If you were to come in and change this and add something like a job name out front or a job number to the front of the name, that's no longer the same project between the two and will get confused. So if you ever make those changes, make sure that you make the same adjustment in both programs so that the systems don't lose plot track of one another. Uh, again, the third most important piece to this is going to be the item names. It doesn't matter what the item type is, it doesn't matter what the description is, or the default price, or the accounts that they're associated with, none of that matters. The only thing that matters for us is that the item names line up, and that their parents are the same. So anything that shows up in planning, and has some sub subsections under planning, will match up to the construction suite estimates planning category and all the different subsections there too. So as long as you guys have those three magic elements, the names, the job names, and the item names, uh, contact names, job names, item names, then you're in great shape. Um, just as a, an add-on to that as well, make sure that you always use items for your transactions in QuickBooks. If you try to expense anything, like you use the expenses tabs on bills or checks, we're not going to, Construction Suite isn't going to understand that because one account could go to a thousand different items and it's important to make sure that you use those items instead of just saying this is a cost on the job. It needs to apply to an item. You bought what? So do that in Construction Suite will never ever get lost in the process. Um, if you are concerned that your actual costs might not be completely accurate when you import them, we have a tool for that. 
go back to QuickBooks integration, and when you import your actual costs, there's a little report that we'll generate in QuickBooks that gives you an outline of everything that we found. This is an amazingly great tool to go through and double check all the actual costs. If you're looking for something that doesn't show up in this report, it means that you put it in the wrong place in QuickBooks. It's assigned to the wrong customer job, or maybe it's not assigned to a customer job. You just have it out there as a free floating cost. Um, so again, this report will show you what QuickBooks has in that customer job. If it's missing or if it doesn't show up in the right place, like if it says it has no items, just fix the transaction, update the report, pull the information back into Construction Suite and you'll be all set. Now with that, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the questions portion. So uh, that's going to close out everything that we have for you guys in the webinar itself. Uh, don't forget if you guys do have any questions or if there's anything else that you guys would like to cover, send it in. I'll, I will have the webinar open for the next few minutes to make sure that we cover all those questions. Um, but for anybody else who is pretty comfortable with what you guys have right now, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, and once again, my name is Ian. I'm one of the QuickBooks Pro Advisors here with UDA Technologies. It's been a pleasure taking you through the QuickBooks books integration and hopefully we've covered any of your questions that you guys might have had uh, but let us know if you have any follow-ups you can always reach the company here just go back to construction suite take a look under the help menu and you'll actually find plenty of phone numbers and email addresses and everything like that under the contact information section so reach out to us if there's anything else that you guys would like to cover for now though don't forget we've got our scheduling webinar that's going to be available to you guys tomorrow afternoon uh, we're going to be starting that one on Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. Friday, Rachel is going to take over for Construction Online webinar, and she'll be taking you guys through all the different features and facets and QuickBooks Online integration briefly. Um, so if you guys are interested in taking a look at that, don't forget to sign up for the Friday webinar at 3 p.m. Central as well. For now, for now though, uh, once again, thanks guys so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure having you guys. Uh, once again, this is Ian with UDA Technologies, and this will conclude our QuickBooks integration webinar. You guys have a great night. Thanks again.